from your basic calculus, your teacher approached this subject in a way that X is substituted by values that approaches the designated value constant. And then as X approaches that designated constant value, the limit of the function approaches also a certain value. So from here, this is our language or notation for this concept of limits. If you remember, your teacher told you to read this as the limit of f of x as x approaches 8 equals 4. This means that the limit of a function is a real number. This one, L. And that f of x approaches this value as x approaches, let's say in this case, 8. Kaya you take note, some of the rules, there are some rules that you have to observe to be able to eval evaluate the limit of a function. So this is an illustration of this given limit, the limit of x cubed minus 1 divided by x minus 1 as x approaches 1 equals 3. Now take note, class, that the denominator gives you restriction, that you cannot assume value of x equal to 1 because the denominator becomes zero in that case. That's why we have hit here, no? One is error for y. So you cannot assign value for that. Now, <clears throat> take a look at the numerator. You can see there, x cubed minus one. If you remember your algebra, this is a difference of two cubes. You can write this as x cubed minus um, one cube or just say one parenyan. We have in our factoring so algebra. Still remember that one? Plus? Yes, po. Ayan. So, yung factor nito, x minus 1, and then we have x squared plus, or in this case, y tayo, no? So, x minus y. Tapos, magdi-diminish yung first term, yung kanyang degree, tapos mag a naman yung degree ng second term. Uh, sorry, no, this is not y squared. That's just y. Then this is y squared. So whatever is the value of x or y, you just follow this template na <clears throat> magdi-diminish yung mga yung degree ng first term pero mag a ascend yung degree ng second term. Now, if this is plus Iba naman yung arrangement dyan, di ba? It would be x plus y, pero the, the sign here would be alternating. So I hope you remember that. There's a file in the channel that I am using wherein I illustrated some algebra concepts from real numbers or from a set up to um, inequality yata or even up to matrices. So you can uh, browse that file for you to recall those algebra concepts. So that's why this numerator here, we can factor it in this way. 
So I hope it's clear, medyo maliit. So we have here x cubed minus 1 can be factored x minus 1 x squared plus x plus 1. And so the x minus 1 in the numerator can be cancelled with x minus 1 sa denominator. And what's left now is x squared plus x plus 1, which is a second degree function. Okay? x squared plus x plus 1. Now, <clears throat> this is a quadratic function. And again, what I told you from our uh, topic on functions and relations and how to graph a second degree fun function. Kaya, this will aid you to graphing the second degree function. First, you have to transform this to standard form. Now, what is the standard form for this? Because you can equate this to y equals x squared plus x plus 1. For you to be able to identify where is the vertex and to know kung asaan mag-open yung parabola. Now, definitely, with the x squared here, this one will give you a clue that this parabola is symmetrical with the y-axis. That's the clue, right? So, you have to follow the template na x minus h okay, squared equals 4a y minus k. And you have to transform this general form into a standard form to be able to easily graph the parabola. So, how are we going to do it? First, this one, you're going to make it a perfect square trinomial. How? By completing the square. Yeah, oh, very good, Michael. <clears throat> so what is the number that we're going to add? Because looking at x squared plus x plus 1, definitely the, you cannot factor this one. You can only factor this if you do something like completing the square. So what number should we add or subtract? Add and subtract, uh. I mean, so that this will become a perfect square trinomial. And the middle term should be x. Diba? In completing the square, what are we going to do? Anong step yon? Get one half of the numerical coefficient of the second term and then square it and then you add it to or add that numerical coefficient and then also subtract what i mean is this you have x squared so uh, are you seeing where i'm writing then plus you have an a one as a numerical coefficient of the x. What is one? One half of one. Diba? One half. Diba, class? So, meron kang x dyan, no? Plus one. What you're going to do is yung one half, square mo yan, tapos, mag-i-add mo siya. And then, isang one half naman, i-minus mo. No, one half squared, I mean. So practically, nag-add ka lang ng zero. Okay? So in effect, ito, we can rewrite it like this one. Oh, tingnan nyo kung saan yung strokes ko, ha? 
Kasi I'm just writing on provided spaces dito sa slides para mag-guided pa rin tayo dun sa topic natin. So I'm going to simplify this one. Yan, simplify ko to. So I have x squared plus x. Tapos gagamitin ko yung positive. Meron ako uh, plus one half squared. Okay? Tapos yung sa kabila, di ba may y tayo dyan? Yan. So, itatranspose ko tong naiwang numbers dito. Di ba mayroon akong 1? So, mayroon akong minus 1. Tapos, may minus 1 half squared yan. Itanspose ko sa kabila, magiging positive na yan. So, mayroon akong uh, 1 half squared is 1 fourth. Yun. So, this would be equal to y minus 3 fourths. O, diba? Negative 3 fourths. So, ito class, pwede mo yung isulat na ngayon as <clears throat> tayo ha. As equal to x plus one half quantity squared. Ito siya. Yan. Pag i-factor mo yan, that becomes the square of a binomial. So, x plus one half squared. Naalala nyo pa yan? Algebra nyo. Okay, class? Ngayon, yung right side, as is yun. Ito yun. So, ibig sabihin, going back to this template, ito, to class, yung sinulat ko, yung h natin, Kasi H ka, maki yung vertex yun. So, yung H natin dito is negative one half. Which is right here. You know. X is negative one half. Tapos yung K is positive three fourths. Which is also above the x-axis. Diba? Ito. So, ito class, itong binibilugan ko, ang location yan is at negative one-half and positive three-fourths. So, alam mo na ngayon yung vertex ng parabola mo. Hanapin mo tong y-intercept. Sorry, ha? So, you have y equals actually x uh, 0 squared plus 0 plus 1 ah that is equal to 1 so ito pala is 1 so i-connect mo na yan ipag-connect mo niyan to meron ka na yung corresponding value dito kasi nga ano siya eh um symmetrical with respect to the so yung kanyang line of symmetry is along this line here Yan. Yan yung line of symmetry niya. So, practically, pag maglalagay ka ng point dito, may corresponding point, point din siya dyan. And you can connect this three para makapag-form ka ngayon ng parabola. Oh, so, there's no need for you to assign mga numbers na marami. Basta mag-locate mo lang yung vertex, tapos yung ah... Uh, y-intercept, and then you have an idea now how the parabola opens. Kasi nga, wala naman tayong negative dun sa value na to eh. Ito itong y minus negative 3 fourths. Wala tayong negative sa labas. Kaya it is opening up. Kuha nyo? So it is very important to really know how to graph a function. Kahit na nasa limits na tayo, kailangan nyo pa rin siyang i-recall.
Okay? Hahanapin mo kung saan yung limit ng function. But first, you have to know how the function behaves. So, you have to graph it first. Kaya nag-graph tayo. Ngayon, after uh, cancellation dito, dito sa line na to, nag-cancel na tayo, and you already have the second degree function, ayan, you can proceed to substituting the value of x, which is equal to 1. So when x is equal to 1, second degree function na tayo ngayon, anong magiging value niya, class? When x is 1? 3 po ba mo? Ayun, obviously. It is 3, class. Ayan na siya, oh. Kaya na-justify na natin, bakit 3? Okay? So after cancellation, meron kang second degree function, and then you have to know kung saan siya sa Cartesian plane. Anong form niya? Paano siya nag-behave? So meron na tayong na-identify na parabola at meron na tayong nakuhang limit. Therefore, ang tanong ngayon, meron kang na-identify dito na zero and error. Saan yan? When you assign a value of x equals 1, Sa original function natin, ito yon. meron tayo ditong point na na-identify. And let's call this point a hole. Bakit siya hole? Kasi nga, hindi pwedeng dumaan itong function na to kasi may limit siya dyan. Nakakuha niya, class? Nakuha niya? So this is a hole in this in this particular function pero you can proceed pagpunta doon kaya lang that's how it should be graphed okay so when once man, once na magraph niyo to nang ganito na siya itsura niya uh, definitely i have this understanding that you know how to graph the function how to identify its limits because you indicated na merong siyang hole dito meaning na identify nyo yung limit ng function kuha nyo class okay so medyo nag level up tayo ha sa limit na concept noong basic calculus niyo ina apply na natin ngayon siya at kung paano siya nagbe-behave Okay? So, tapos ma-graph nyo siya by uh, transforming from a general uh, form to standard form. And also, you identify from this tabulation dito na as x approaches a value of 1, ibig sabihin, not really equal to 1, but only approaching the value of 1 either from the right or from the left. So as it approaches the value of 1, ayan class, tapos approaching also from the value of 1, greater than 1, you will notice it approaches a value of what? Ano class? What value? It approaches a value of? Three. Three. Okay. But, but not really equal to three. Kaya nga, yung symbol na x approaches one. Then f of x approaches three. So notice that symbolic notation class. Hmm? Naintindihan nyo? Yung reasoning na yan. So, yun ang mathematics reasoning. Kailangan mag-grasp nyo yan, yung essence nyan, para ma-appreciate nyo itong concept ng limits. Okay? Hmm, Janela? May tanong? Wala po ma. Wala. Okay. So, finding the limits using the table, oh, okay na yan ha, naintindihan na natin yatin yan. 
Now, finding limits algebraically. Ito yung mga approaches to finding the limits. Una, plugging the x value. Pag wala naman tayong nakitang restriction, uh, pwedeng we can immediately uh, plug, plug in the values of x. You can say na, okay, for 4 minus 5. So the answer is negative 1. So the function is defined. And you can also do factoring. Kagaya ng ginawa kanina. Kaya nag-factor tayo. Okay lang tong mga sagot na to class. Kasi wala namang instruction na graph. Pero kung merong ganyan, and locate the limit of the function. So if that is the instruction, yung ginawa natin kanina, yun exactly ang gagawin ninyo. Okay? So pag gaganito lang, uh, pagkatapos mong makancel yan, immediately substitute the value, and so you arrive at a value which is equal to 3. Another way of uh, finding the limit of the function is by finding a common denominator. So in this case, ito yung given sa atin, you notice that the numerator is a rational uh, expression. So you find the LCD. And what's the LCD? 3 times x minus 3. And so after finding the LCD, you join these two together. Ito, isahin mo na yan. So ito yon. And then you get the reciprocal. Because this one, you can write it as x minus 6 over 3 times x minus 3. And then multiplied with uh, yung denominator niya. Instead of divide, you multiply it with its reciprocal. Ayan. So that's way you can cancel it. So what's left now is 1 over 3 times quantity x minus 3. So may restriction na ba tayong nakikita dito? Is it possible na is it possible ba na maging zero pa yung ating denominator? Kasi initially dito identified mo na pag i-substitute mo yung x equals 6, yung denominator mo will be zero. At yun ang iniiwasan mo. Iniiwasan mo yan. Kaya gumagawa ka ng paraan na hindi maging zero yung expression ng denominator. If you can still do something about it. So, nakita mo, ah, pwede palang mag-LCD sa numerator. And then finally, arriving at this expression. And then somehow, you see light at the end of the tunnel. ba? Kasi, when you substitute the value of x equals 6, nakita mo na, ah, may limit pala is 1 over 9. Okay, class? So, that's the value of the limit. Then, another way is by rationalization. Ano nga ba yung gagawin natin dito, class? Can you still remember? Anyone? Hmm? Paano natin to ma magawa ng paraan para hindi to magiging zero? Because once you substitute the value of negative 2 to x, that denominator is zero. So we have to do something about this. Paano, class? Hmm? Algebra concepts na naman. Anong tawag doon? Multiply by its? Letter C. Conjugate. Oh, ayun, conjugate. Conjugate, no, <laughs> Michael. Uh, so, yung conjugate niya, 
ay ito. Ayan. So, plus tayo dito. Plus, di ba? Plus. Ayan. So, parang, in a way, nag-multiply ka ng one. And then, remember na naman yung algebra mo. Because you are going to multiply yung sum and difference of two binomials. Parang A plus B, then A minus B. Diba? So it is A squared minus B squared. Alala nyo pa yan? So yung A nyo dito, yung ganitong expression, ito yun. No? So the square root of X plus 1, uh, plus, no, X plus 11 squared. So, mawawala na yung radical sign dyan. Tapos, minus 3 squared. Tapos, yung sa baba, multiply mo lang siya as it is. And simplify. So, that would be equal to, ayan, x plus 2 na siya. And, merong similar term sa baba. Kaya magka-cancel. You see the beauty class? Ganda, na ba? So, pagkatapos niyan, ito na lang yung maiwan. No? At makikita mo siya, wala nang chance maging zero yung denominator. So, x, when substituted by negative 2, will have a value equal to... Hmm, anong mangyari? Teka, anong nangyari? Ba't bumalik yung ano? Ah, bumalik siya sa original expression. Yan, sinulat lang niya to. Ulit. Inulit niya. Pero that is equated now to 1 over the square root of x plus 11 plus 3. And tapos isubstitute mo na. And the answer is positive 1, 6. Okay? Yan. For rationalizing. Kaya maraming mga way na dapat i-manipulate mo muna, you have to look closely to any given limit before you do the substitution uh, of the x. Because you, ca you, you can do something about it by those algebra concepts. No? Another one. Ah, wala na.